OK, so let's have a look at a good example of coding in RISCOS written in Python, specifically Python 3.8. Um, the scope of this video is just to write a very simple program that will create an infinite loop in which infinite we will print on the screen the word tick or talk depending on the state we are in and then we will toggle the um, caps lock led making it flash and then waiting for a second and repeating this uh, forever until the user press um, an escape or something so it's very very simple uh, the scope is just to show you how to use uh, swice in this particular case in python on riscos and uh, swice are fundamentally the equivalent uh, riscos equivalent of syscalls on other operating systems and platforms the exactly the same concept um, if you're not familiar with the concept of syscalls please have a look at the uh, video description below whether you will find a link to an article that describes everything about syscalls okay um, when discussing swires we also use some um, low level programming terminology like cpu register and all these things if you're not familiar with this terminology again check the video description below where you will find a link to an article that gives you all these um, terms right and uh, finally you can get these source codes that we're going to use in this video from the Riscos community on GitHub. And again, check the video description below for the link to get the source code and play with it on your Riscos machine. All right, let's get into the code analysis. I already uploaded my uh, Python source code, it's called Capture for this log into my favorite editor, which is Stronget. And uh, you can use any editor because again, also uh, Python is just a text file. Right, so um, the first two lines, we uh, import uh, libraries as typical in Python. Now, the interesting one is import as, as y, which will import the uh, swy command that we will need to, uh, in order to be able to make syscalls to discuss. Um, import time will just import the Python time uh, library. So we're gonna use it um, to create a slip of one second. The code is very short and pretty simple, so everybody should be able to grasp it immediately. Um, at the third line here, we set a variable that we're going to use as state and that will contain the state of our program. And we preset it to the value 1. So we start with a state of 1. Next, we are creating an infinite loop. This while 1 is going to be an infinite loop. It will never end. And within this loop, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to have an if statement that check if state is equal to one, then we will print the message tick on the screen. Otherwise, we will print talk. And what we do next is we will uh, invert the value in state. So we'll change the state. And so if it is one, it will become minus one here because we just multiply basically state by minus one. And if it is minus one, it will come back to be one. So at every infinite loop iteration here, state will become one minus one, one minus one, one minus one, okay? Next, the important part. We are calling swy, okay? And the way we call a swy in Python is we specify swy dot swy, and then between parentheses, the, we call the uh, syscall, so that's why by its name, with a single quote, around. So in this case, we're going to call osbyte. Then the next parameter is a special string that specify how the swy parameters work. In this particular case, we have specified integer, integer, integer. Okay, so it means that we will specify a set of three numbers, okay, that follows, as parameters of the swy. If you have a string, instead of i, you need to use the uh, letter s. Okay, so if we are going to, uh, for example, put a string as a first parameter, 
then you need to put an S as the first letter in this string. That, so that's how this works. Okay? Now, these letters are also in order, and they start from CPU register 0 onward. So if your SWI requires three parameters, like in this case, you need to put 3i here. Okay? Uh, in this case, three numerical parameters, 3i. Or if it is a string, you know, an S and 2i and so on and so forth, or an I, S, I, whatever. Now that's very important. And remember that this tree will be copied into CPU registers, okay? For us by the SWI. All right, so we call OSBYTE, right? We tell Python that we are going to provide three numerical parameters and the first one we pass is 202 and this is a service offered by the Osbyte SWI. Osbyte SWI offer multiple services to have a list of everything Osbyte does please check the um, RISCOS PRM okay and 202 allow us to either read or write a flag set Okay, in the kernel that contains the state of all the special characters, sorry, the special keys of the keyboard. And one of these, obviously, is the caps lock. Now, to read the state, we just need to pass zero as the second swipe parameters. And that parameter is going to be stored in CPU register R1. While if we want to use it, to write, so to change the state of this uh, flag set, then we just need to pass a number that is different than zero. And how the value of the flag set is going to be changed? Well, um, RISCOS OSBYTE, we, um, service 202, will use an exclusive O, right? EOR, UR, sorry. And using this number against the existing flag set. And before to do that, we are able to select which bit we want to um, manipulate. And how do we do that? We pass a bit mask as the third parameter, which will be loaded in CPU register R2. Okay. And this bit mask, in this case, is 255, which means we are going to take the entire flag set. The entire flag set is an 8 bit, so uh, 255 means we take all of the bits okay and so how this works it risk us with osbyte will take the entire flag set will end it a n d end it against our bit mask okay and in this case because it's 255 that means that the result of this is going to be an exact copy of the flag set okay and then it will exclusive or that flag set against this special value that is 16 and now what 16 means in binary it's a 32-bit number on which only one bit is set to one and that specific bit is the fifth bit in the binary number which is also called bit number four because remember bits are always counted from zero okay and the bit number four identify the logical state of the uh, caps lock LED. Okay. Well, the entire caps lock thing. Um, so by EOR 16 against the uh, special keys uh, flag set, what we're going to do is if the caps lock logical state is one, then we will change it back to zero. And if the caps lock logical state is zero, then we will change it to one. And because 16 only has one at the, the fifth bit, so bit number four, right, we will only change the state of the caps lock. And every other bit in that flag set will be unchanged. In technical terms, we say they will be preserved. Okay. However, Executing this SWI will only change the logical state of the caps lock, not update the LED to the new state. 
to update the LED to the new state, we need to do another swipe. And in this case, we're going to do it immediately after. And so we're going to call Osbyte again. This time, we're only going to use one single CPU register and we're going to pass a number. So the string, the special string in Python is going to be just a single I. And then the parameter is going to be 118. So service 118, what it does, it updates the state. And in this case, if up here we have set caps lock logical state to zero, then here it will turn the LED off. If instead we have uh, updated it to one, then down here it will turn the LED on. Okay, so it's very simple. After we've done that, what we're going to do is we're going to go time sleep and we pass one second. So what's going to happen here is we'll just sleep for one second and then we will repeat the infinite loop. Now this time state is not going to be one anymore because we changed it over here, right? So it's going to be minus one and therefore instead of printing tick we will print talk. Okay? And then we will toggle state again and if it is minus one in this case we will bring it back to one and we'll basically change the state of the caps lock LED again, slay for a second, and then repeat. And in this case, it's going to be one again, so we'll print tick. So tick, tock, tick, tock. All right. Let's see how this works. Now, before we can run a Python script on RISCOS, we need to make sure, right, that RISCOS have seen, in this case, Python 3.8 interpreter. Now, I have it stored in my hard disk in programming Python, and then uh, I store them all by version. And so 3 uh, forward slash 8 uh, is just the way I store um, different version of Python on my hard drive. So just by seeing this should be enough. If it isn't, you have to double click on the icon. OK. And if you do that, also run the Python interpreter in interactive mode. We don't really need it in interactive mode, so I can close this. So what I'm going to do next, I am going to double click on flash caps lock. However, for Python, we also have stronger facility that we can just press the uh, run button here and it will run it for us. Now, the advantage of using the uh, this button instead of uh, double clicking on the file icon on the filer is that this button also will execute the file that is with the changes that are not yet saved. So if you want to test something, we can just uh, quickly test it by uh, using this uh, button. Uh, while double clicking on the icon on the filer requires that obviously we save those changes by using the uh, floppy disk icon, which in this day and age, we need to explain what it does because floppies are not used anymore. So this icon might not be meaningful for uh, new uh, software engineers. Anyway, so to save this on RISCOS, we just click on the icon. And then all we need to do, OK, is we need to drag this icon on where we want to save the file. I already saved it here, so I don't need to do it again. So I press cancel. But as soon as we move the icon up here, the path will be. Uh, let me uh, quickly show you how this works. So nothing has to be selected, otherwise, StrongEd will try to save the uh, selected text. Okay, so nothing selected. We click here, and as you can see, it's now showing flash caps lock. It's a type Python 3. Remember, RISCOS doesn't use file extension, it uses file type. So in this case, Python 3 is a label that has been used to configure the special uh, file type for Python 3 scripts. Okay. And so all we need to do is, for example, let's sort it here. Okay. We drag it here, and that's it. It's been stored over here. So absolutely simple. Okay. Anyway, so let's double click. And there you go. It's printing tick, tock, tick, tock, tick, tock. And if we have a look at the uh, keyboard uh, caps lock LED, we will see that it's flashing at the same speed. All right. Thank you very much for watching.